Audi RS3 takes on VW Golf R. We're going to set lap times to work out which one is faster, but first, which one is more fun? The RS3 and Golf R are based on the same VW Group platform. Both are turbocharged, but the Audi has a five-cylinder engine, while the VW has a four-pot. The RS3 has a big power advantage, but it also costs close to £10,000 more than the Golf R. We do bang on about this Golf R Evo, but for good reason. It's a genuinely brilliant little hot hatch on the road. It's a huge amount of fun. The chassis is really sweet and it's properly quick. It's actually a close arrival for the S3 in terms of price and power output, but frankly, it's a much better car than that S3. It batters it in terms of driver enjoyment. This Golf R is the benchmark four-wheel drive hot hatch. It's therefore the car that the RS3 has to prove itself against. As we know, that RS3 is 10,000 pounds more expensive than this Golf R. So what do you get for that extra £10,000? It's got more power, 60 brake horsepower or so. And you get the Audi badge rather than the Volkswagen badge. But do you get a more enjoyable car? Do you get a more fun, faster hot hatch? Well, that's what we're going to find out. But first, let's just remind ourselves of what makes this Golf R so much fun. The engine. It's a two-litre, four-cylinder turbo engine, but we've got really sharp throttle response and a really vibrant, energetic top end as well. It's just a really, really sharp, really enjoyable drivetrain, masses of performance. The gear shifts are really quick and smooth. Yeah, it just works really well together. On the road, the chassis feels really sweetly balanced, really poised. There's this amazing sensation of it just being on its tiptoes just ready to dart into a corner. It's not an oversteer machine on the road, of course it isn't. But you do get this sense that the rear axle is just ready, just willing to come into play. It makes it really, really good fun. On track, well, on track it will slide if you really throw it into a corner, but that's not something that they've developed into the chassis. It's not a finely honed dynamic trait. Frankly, you're just lobbing it in and getting it to do something that it doesn't really want to do. The best front wheel drive hot hatches translate their on-road ability really, really sweetly onto the track. Think Megane Trophy, think Leon Cupra. They're brilliant road cars, but they come alive on the track. Unfortunately, the same isn't quite true of this Golf R. It just doesn't have their focus, it doesn't have their singularity of purpose. And it just means that this car becomes slightly spongy, slightly wooden, slightly lazy on track. It's not bad, it's not bad at all, but you just lose that agility and that precision and that, that nimbleness that makes it so much fun on the road. So we've got a Haldex four-wheel drive system, which all sounds very encouraging. There's never, ever any sense of the rear axle starting to come into play when you get on the gas at corner exit. It's just completely locked down. The best way to describe it is that it feels like a front wheel drive car with infinite traction. You will never, ever, certainly in the dry, feel the rear axle come into play under power. I don't want bagfuls of oversteer. That's not what I'm asking for. I just love to be able to feel the car drifting out slightly away from the corner. So the car isn't an understeering mess, and you can get it around a track in fairly good shape and have a reasonable amount of fun, but it's just never thrilling. It's never thrilling. The RS3, it can send 100% of its torque to the rear axle. It's got more power and more focused chassis setup. Does that make it more fun? and 60 brake horsepower in a hatchback. That's crazy. 20 years ago, the Ferrari 355 had about 360 brake horsepower. Such is progress. This car feels quick on the road, but it doesn't thump along like you think it might do. The track tends to kill any impression of straight line speed. So it doesn't feel 
outrageously quick here like you imagine it would do. And crucially, it doesn't feel a great deal quicker than that Golf R. Another 10,000 pounds. Just what are you getting? It's a little over 60 horsepower up on the Golf R. We've got a more focused chassis set up, I have to say a smarter cabin, and a four-wheel drive system that can send 100% of its torque to the rear axle, but I don't know when it does that, perhaps when you're parking or something, because it doesn't feel like it wants to drift away from a corner at all, not even a little bit. It doesn't feel like there's any power going to the rear axle, in fact. As with the Golf R, it just feels like a front-wheel drive car with infinite traction. Immediately, the steering is just slightly looser, just a little bit slacker. There's not a great deal in it. Neither car really steers beautifully, frankly. But the Golfs just feel slightly more direct, slightly sharper. It's not the most responsive gearbox, actually, on upshifts. I think the Golfs is just fractionally quicker. The Golf also just about betters it for throttle response. It's just slightly sharper. In this car, even when you're in a low gear and you're halfway around the rev range, there's just a very, very slight pause. This RS3 also has another 30 kilograms to haul around. So the straight line performance difference between this and that Golf R really isn't that substantial. This car also doesn't feel like it wants to get into the apex in the same way. It doesn't have the same agility, that same really darty front end. It's just slightly lazier on the way into a corner. And it feels even less willing to rotate in corners to bring the rear axle into play. The consequence of all of that is that it's not as much fun as that Golf R. Neither of these are really track cars, we know that. But it has to be said, the Golf R is just slightly more amusing on circuit. It might even be faster. With the RS3 on the left and the Golf on the right, we're across the line. The Golf is better on the brakes towards the hairpin and it's sharper into the apex. It gets an early two tenths of a second lead. Again, the Golf is better on the brakes into the chicane. I have to scrub off more speed in the RS3 to get it through the last part of the chicane and it drops another two tenths of a second. It now trails by four tenths. Both cars are flat through the long left-hander and the quick right that follows. The power really counts down this straight, and the RS3 claws back two tenths of a second. But it understeers horribly in the tight left-hander, and it drops back by a tenth. The Golf now leads by three tenths. Again, the RS3 puts its power advantage to good use and cuts the gap down to one tenth of a second as we dive into the hairpin. As they accelerate away from the hairpin, the RS3 gets to within a tenth of a second of the Golf. This one could not be closer. But watch what happens now. The Audi's brakes are getting hot and it doesn't want to stop for the chicane. It drops back by four tenths in one corner alone. The Audi claws back some of the deficit down the next straight. After the penultimate corner, the Golf leads by three tenths with just one corner to go. The Golf carries more speed through the final corner and crosses the line in 1 minute 26.1 seconds. The RS3 sets a time of 1 minute 26.6 seconds. Despite being down on power by some 66 brake horsepower and 63 foot-pounds of torque, the Golf R goes half a second quicker than the RS3. The Audi accelerated harder away from the slower corners and it was quicker down the straights, but the Golf was better on the brakes and it carried more speed into the corners with less understeer. I did three laps in the RS3 within a tenth of a second of one another. It just didn't want to go any quicker. The Golf proves once again that a sweet chassis is worth more than outright power when it comes to lap times. So the Golf R is quicker than the RS3, it's a lot cheaper, and it's more fun to drive too.